That's another happy customer right there. When they hang up the phone, you know they're happy. What's up everybody, this is Brenton from Forza Tuning and Performance. And today I'm gonna talk about this Black Dodge Demon behind me. This is a stage 4R build, but it's a little bit more than just a regular stage 4R build. This customer wanted a lot of custom stuff spec on it. So what we did is we did our regular stage 4R package and he opted for a lot of additional upgrades. We did an upgraded differential brace in the normal package has. We did all full billet control arms in the back as opposed to the chrome molly arms that we normally use. In some of the other videos, I showed you all a supercharger that we had plumbed for nitrous spray bars. So we did this in this blower. So instead of like putting a plate behind a throttle body and you know shooting the nitrous in like that, what we did is we had the blower, the case drilled and spray bars plumbed. So now there's nitrous and fuel delivery inside each intake runner uh, directly on top of the intake valve. So this produces a much more compound effect. Now the nitrous isn't going through the blower, it's literally being injected directly on top of the intake valve along with additional fuel. You can use a much smaller pill. So in other words, they might have spec that like a 0.28 nitrous pill would be like a 50 shot or 100 shot or whatever it might be. So now that same size pill or amount of nitrous is going to be considerably more power than if you injected it directly behind the throttle body. That's just the most efficient way to do it and it's the most uniform delivery. So if you look in the back, he's got some shots. The customer wanted carbon fiber bottles. They look really good. They're really lightweight. They're 12 pound bottles as opposed to the bigger metal bottles that are 15 pound. The nitrous is lighter. It looks cool. Me personally, I think the metal bottles, if it's like a, a race specific application, and you're strictly looking for performance, you know, out of the nitrous system. The, the metal bottles, you can hold a little bit more nitrous. They're a little bit more affordable and the metal is a better conductor of heat. So it's a little bit easier to keep the bottle pressure or temperature in this, you know, same thing as the temperature increases, the pressure increases. So it's a little bit easier to keep a stable bottle pressure without the heaters running so much. But it's still, it's, it's incremental, you know, this will be fine. He's got a few other cars and he wanted the carbon fiber bottles to match and they do look really good. So this nitrous system was provided by Nitrous Outlet. We pretty much use those. Those are our go-to nitrous people. And we're actually running their brand new Promax controller, which is, this is the first car that we've set up on a Pro Max. And so far, I haven't got into all the tuning specifics of it yet, but as a general outline, it looks like a really nice controller. Their older controller, we had a lot of great luck with it. And it, it provided a lot of infinite adjustability on when we deliver the nitrous, how much nitrous, the rate of progression. So you could really fine tune the system with it. So the Pro Max looks even better. So I'm super excited to get to tune in this car and have the chance to really get into that controller and, and see what all it's capable of. This car has our supercharger spacer kit, which we have made. And same thing, we've talked about it a little bit in previous videos. We use that a lot. I really like using it on a nitrous setup because you can increase the runner length right there and it's an insulator so the nitrous is spraying right there so it's it's kind of a, a compound effect when you put it all together it has our patented crankcase breather system on it so this car it is capable of running on pump gas with a high quality octane booster the only two that I, I can personally vouch for and recommend is the one from VP and also Boostane. Boostane is a company located down here in Florida. We've used them for a while. I had somebody send me some bottles and, and, and it wasn't even Boostane. And you know, they were like, can you tell me what you think about this Octane Booster? I'm not gonna say all the Octane Boosters on the market because it's not like I've sat here in a lab and tested every single one of them. But primarily those Octane Boosters that you get from the auto parts store or something, it's, it's a bunch of bullshit. You know, if you're tuning a car and you're on the verge of spark knock and you put that shit in the tank, it's still on the verge of spark knock. It's not doing a damn thing. It's taking money out of your wallet, it's doing that. So I'm a little hesitant, you know, I feel like Octane Booster kind of like snake oil. So I was like, yeah, I'll test it. And honestly, I was shocked. I knew VPs worked because they every product VP has is, is top quality. You don't, they don't put anything with their name on it that's not. And we're not, I'm not sponsored by VP, that's just how it is. So I tried this Boostane and the one I tried was, they make a Boostane and a Boostane Professional. And they're both good. The Professional is just a little bit more concentrated, so the Octane's more. I think it was, it was a Stage 4R Demon was the first one that I did. And so on the High Octane button, we were using VP MS109, the same thing that we use on all of them. Not on the High Octane button, on what he would use. He still wanted to drive it some, so I tested and we were like, honestly, I stopped doing dyno pulls within about two to three degrees of timing 
from what it was running on the high octane button with race gas and there was still no detectable spark knock. So honestly, I was shocked. I've used it ever since then. You know, now we, I contacted Boostane, you know, I've used it a lot and I recommend it in a lot of cars. A lot of times guys will get, you know, they'll have a high horsepower car like this and they're running on pump gas. And if we get some good high quality 93 octane pump gas, personally, I always recommend Shell specifically, again, through testing different fuels from all around the country or all around the world, you can see all 93 octane fuels are not created equal. You will see a drastic difference in the amount of timing that the exact same combination can handle with different fuels from different gas stations. So Shell specifically is what I would recommend, but you can take a car that's tuned on Shell 93 octane that's perfectly safe and, and producing a lot of power, no spark knock, and the guy can go to the gas station and go to Shell and pick up the pump and push the 93 button but you don't know for sure if the truck driver delivering that gas accidentally put the wrong octane in the wrong tank in the ground. And I've seen this happen numerous occasions. So you could be doing everything right and you're putting the right gas in there, you're driving a little bit extra to go get shell and you're in a situation where you could potentially damage your engine and the money that you've invested in it through no fault of your own. So cheap insurance that I, I kind of recommend to people is use Boostane or VP or some high quality octane booster and just buy yourself a little bit of insurance. It's like the big can is like 28 bucks and it's like 32 ounces. You can put half of that in a tank of gas and you're talking $15 in a car that you've got $100,000 or plus in. And even if that happens, worst case, you've still got some added protection to, to protect your investment and the money you've spent. So that's my little spiel on Octane Booster. I, you know, customers call in, I explain the same thing over and over and over again. I hear all the time, oh wow, I would have never thought of that, thank you. So I'll just put in this video. It doesn't exactly pertain to exactly this demon, but I think it is useful and it might help somebody from damaging their engine at some point. So we've got this car set up on a, a pulley system that will produce 20 plus pounds of boost. So he can still drive it on the street with 93 Octane and Octane Booster or at the track he's gonna use VPMS 109 race gas. I do have a lot of people that ask me and we just addressed it in a question and answer video, but since we do have this demon and we're it's got nitrous on it, we're in the middle of talking about it, I'll just go ahead and address it. And, and a lot of people ask like, how exactly does nitrous work? Or why would you use nitrous? What does it do? So let me just explain this. And I'm not a chemist, so I can explain it in layman terms, something that I would understand. But for this you know, instance, it works fine. Nitrous oxide is the same thing that you breathe in, like a laughing gas at the dentist. So they tell you to you know, put the mask on, count back from 10, and you go to La La Land. Okay, same thing. The only difference is the nitrous oxide that you buy for uh, race applications has a sulfur additive added to it. And the only reason they do that is specifically so people don't buy nitrous for cars and try to breathe the shit in and, and get a buzz. So same thing. We all know what it does at the dentist office and we all know it makes engines faster, but how does it do that? Nitrous oxide, when you heat it, and if you look in this car, underneath the billet bracket is bottle heaters. And we have a pressure gauge inside the car that monitors the bottle pressure. Before you can use the nitrous, you have to heat the bottles up. So you engage the bottle heaters and we have it all set up automated on a pressure switch. So we're looking for a target of 1000 to 1100 PSI. So the bottle heaters will activate and they will heat the bottles up. And as they heat, the pressure will rise until we get to the designated pressure. And then it will toggle the, the heaters on and off to keep it in that 1000 to 1100 range. When you heat nitrous oxide up past, I think it's 570 degrees, it actually splits into a, an oxygen and a nitrous molecule. So when you deliver that into the engine, okay, it's just like boosting a bottle basically. It is, you're injecting more oxygen molecules. So force induction is supercharger. Why does it make more power? Because it is forcing air and fuel into the engine under force more than it could ever pull in on, on its own. So nitrous is that much more. An additional benefit of nitrous, it, so you might be asking, okay, why are you running nitrous and a supercharger, okay? You can only spin the supercharger so fast before you reach a, a diminishing point of no return. And what I mean by that is the more you compress air, the byproduct of compressing air is heat, okay, which that's detrimental to the engine and to making power. So the faster you spin the supercharger, the more heat you're producing. So there's a happy medium there between what makes power and at a point where the extra heat 
robs that extra power. So you're just putting an extra strain on everything. You see this a lot on some cars, they'll put out like a crazy dyno number. And so they let the engine cool down and it make like a glory pull, they call it. But when it's actually in a race, some guy can have more boost or spin in the supercharger faster, but his track times are actually slower. And what that is, is once you're actually using the car in a real world scenario, the extra heat added from driving the supercharger that hard is actually diminishing the power. So the guy running less boost is actually has a faster car. Nitrous, on top of being more oxygen molecules, it also has a drastic cooling effect. Okay, so now, right on top of each intake valve, you've got this nitrous oxide that's being injected into the engine along with additional fuel, and it's very cold. Okay, so it's actually cooling the intake charge, which you probably know cooler air, you go out on a cool morning, your car like, wow, it feels faster because it is faster. When air is colder, it's more dense. The same amount of air has more oxygen molecules. So all those things compounded together actually has a synergistic effect. It's much better when you add them all together because you get the extra oxygen, you get the cooling effect, you produce a ton of power very efficiently. So when this car is all together, it's gonna be it's, it'll be very drastic once you engage the nitrous compared to regular stage 4 R Demon. And using the progressive controller, we can monitor that and we can deliver the nitrous in at whatever rate or percentage or amount we want. So really you can, you can make as much power as you want to ingest nitrous. So if you want to make a stage 4 R Demon on race gas, it'll 1,000, 1,000, 1,050 wheel real easy depending on what dyno. You can easily make 100, 150, 200 additional horsepower at the wheels with nitrous very, very easily. So the car will be as fast as you probably want it to be. So on this particular car, how much nitrous are we gonna spray? We'll probably make, set this car up at about 1200 wheel horsepower. That will be enough for the car with a drag pack wheel set up to break into the high eights. That's kind of his goal, that's where he wants to be and that'll be enough to do it. You're gonna get to a point where traction is gonna be the ultimate downfall of the car. Unless you do something drastic in the back, you can only, you, know, you only have so much traction. So at some point, you're gonna add power where the car's almost gonna get slower just because it can't put the power to the ground. So we don't wanna get that far. And uh, honestly, a 1200 wheel, that should be, you know, with a very well prepped track and the right wheel tire combination, you can put it down, but it's still, it's, it's gonna be challenging. So the guy wants about 1200 wheel, that's his goal for the car, and we can easily achieve that. We'll show you videos later on. The car's getting very close to completion. We just have some wiring and some small details left in tuning. In addition to something on this particular car that we don't do in every standard stage 4 R Demon, we usually use drive shafts made from the drive shaft shop, which are very, very good. On this particular one, we had a drive shaft, an Alcoa 7 drive shaft made by Mark Williams Enterprise out in Colorado. They make incredibly high quality stuff. This drive shaft is torque tested in a fixture at 1,500 foot pounds. For the Hellcat stuff, it's pretty much, I mean, you'll, you'll pay the price for it to get it, but quality is through the roof. I mean, it, it looks like a work of art. And in a car at this power level, we don't want to take any chances, so we try to overbuild everything as much as possible. So the guy can put the car through as much abuse as he decides to put it through and nothing break. Also, they'll probably show you some shots of underneath of the car. Just like every single build we do here, every single component that we touch and even things that we don't touch is torque tested. We safety check every vehicle three times and every single bolt that we touch is, is tightened. We don't tighten the stuff with an impact wrench or with an air ratchet. Uh, we might run them down, but everything is torqued with a torque wrench back to spec. And to ensure that we didn't miss one, every single fastener is marked with a paint pen. So it's very easily to tell if the, number one, the bolt was torqued, and later on if any bolt has come loose at all because the paint marks won't line up. We generally go through the car and anything, stuff that we don't even touch, like it probably seems overkill, but you know, brake caliber bolts and stuff that, you know, were tightened at the factory, it's not 100% that everything's tight. And when you're producing a car with this kind of power, you're gonna race it. Safety is obviously the biggest concern here. So it doesn't take a whole lot of extra time and effort to just go through the car from front to back, torque check everything, just make 100% sure that everything's tight. Mark it, that way if you deliver it to the customer and there's, there's a noise or a vibration, you know, instead of just looking under the car and you have all these nuts and bolts, and then like, oh, I wonder what's loose. If you can visually just scan through with your eyes and see paint marks on everything, you can detect a loose bolt very, very easily or something that's moved or shifted. And that just makes it that much easier for the customer when he gets the vehicle. So that's pretty much all I got on this. If there's anything that I didn't cover that you wanna know, by all means, put it in the comments and I'll address it maybe on like on a one-on-one -on -one question and answer deal. But I promise I will answer the question. If not in the comments, we'll do it on a video. And I wanna thank everybody. We have 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. 
So we really appreciate that. We put a lot of efforts into these videos. The guys that produce these videos are, are working constantly on this stuff, trying to improve it and you know, looking at comments and finding stuff that you all want to know. They put a ton of effort in it behind the scenes. So as always, if you like this video, like and subscribe, and I want to thank you.